I am standing on some serious science right now. In this 20 foot shipping container, we have removed the wood floor and poured concrete in its place. There are a ton of awesome uses for this. This year gives us a very low center of gravity. So for instances like tornado shelters where we want to resist a container from overturning, this could solve that problem. This also gives us a radiant heater that we cannot see. So we've actually put in-floor heat lines in the concrete here so now we can electrify this and have a huge thermal mass concrete slab that's going to be radiating nice warm heat up to the occupants all winter long so stay tuned in this video we're going to show you exactly how we did all of this go over maybe some of the unique features of how this would relate to shipping container homes hope you learned something so the science that we performed here is we actually started out planning on pouring concrete right on top of the wood floor. So we had a, a specialized uh, footer that would just continue the slope of the footer and allow us a nice steel leading edge. And then we were gonna run a little bit of uh, rebar lengthwise and we had some laser cut profiles horizontally. And then also we had a whole pile of electric in-floor heat lines run on top of here. But as we were thinking about it, as some other customer jobs came up where potentially we need to really get a low center of gravity on shipping containers, we abandoned that idea and went to the removing of the wood floor and then pouring the concrete in its place. But to do that, you know, there's areas here that the concrete or what we did in this instance is spray foam first and then concrete would just come flying out everywhere and be a real big mess. So you can see that we've taken poly and, and laid that all in ahead of time and you can cut into here you can also see there's, there's a pool noodle in there and so we utilized pool noodles or foam or, or whatever all the way around the perimeter to really ensure that the spray foam didn't fly out in random areas prior to the concrete guys coming and then because this is actually inside a heated tempered shop we're not that worried about the insulation or the thermal expansion of the concrete compared to the steel but if this was something that we were going to be utilizing as a portable office or something, we would most likely continue the foam up the sides and you'd actually be able to see a little bit of foam here and then we could build our steel stud walls right on top of that and foam back up to the foam so that we'd stop steel cross members expanding at different rates than, than the concrete slab itself and then causing the concrete to crack probably. So that's something that we would do differently. This was a, a mobile portable solution and it would be really cool to move these things around maybe in another version and just see how the slab handles. The C channels themselves are a ton of rebar in and themselves, but then with the rebar that we've ran the full 20 foot length, plus in between every 11 inch cross member, we also ran a horizontal chunk of rebars. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, to get the thermostat hooked up and turn it on and just feel what this slab feels like. That's the absolute best radiant heater is one that you can't see. There's so limited space inside of shipping containers. So something like a heater hanging from the wall or whatever, it's just one less thing you need in your, your tiny home. This is cool. This allows us uh, on multiple containers, if you're pouring concrete in, uh, the top channel is typically higher than the, the height of the wood floor. And so if you were to connect two containers side by side and pour a full slab all the way across both, potentially you can get rid of that, that uh, lip that's in the center of your two containers. Another thing with our mod box design that we're working with the China, uh, we've actually eliminated that as well and something I wish containers were just built differently. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the other container here and see how they turned out, how it's all finished. So here it is. This is actually quite impressive, uh, the job they did. I think they did everything by hand. There was no power trowel or nothing in here. It's a pretty small space, but uh, you can see that the concrete just came right up to the top of the channel. But in this instance, they didn't cover the walls because we will be building walls out from here and finishing it uh, with a nice, I think our reline wall covering. So uh, yeah, it wasn't a concern to get things dirty. Can't imagine it's something they want to do in all containers and definitely uh, eliminate a lot of the capacity of hauling cargo, but they sure are uh, brick shit houses once this is done. So here it is. We've actually applied an acrylic sealer to the floor here. And this is a sealer that you can use when the concrete's still wet. And that's a good idea because your concrete is never going to be this clean. If people are walking on it, you come back a month later, it's really dirty and you get all that dirt sealed right into your concrete. And if you see how we've actually finished this here, we've 
applied like a burnished type look. So uh, they've used the hand trowel and with the mag, they can actually bring out some of the blacks in the concrete. And then once you seal all this in, it gives it a, a bit of a stamped or a dyed concrete look and feel to it. And that's basically a very industrial finish to it. Another option that we have is tiling this afterwards would be really nice. And that's a great solution when we bring two containers together and that'll allow us to transition over top of that steel channel that would otherwise be in between them and give you a very uniform looking floor for your container-based project. So that was really fun, this project. This allowed us to play around with removing the wood floor in a shipping container and replacing it with this beautiful concrete slab instead. And so we've also been able to play around with radiant floor insulation, although that's just electric radiant. Next, it'd be really fun to work with a hydronic insulation type and see if we can get a boiler system or something inside of a shipping container. So if you enjoyed that video, please help us out. Give this a like. Uh, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to that channel and ring the bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.